humans have been sailing for over 7,000 years for commercial, military, exploratory, and leisure purposes. And soon, you will too! For our purposes, we will focus on upwind sailing, across the wind, and downwind sailing, as one cannot sail directly into the wind, but can 45 degrees to either side. Wind is our primary concern. This cute little cloud will serve as our wind direction source at zero degrees. When preparing to sail, we must first point our bow into the wind so our boom doesn't swing wildly. A great indicator of wind direction would be the tops of the trees as they sway away from the source. If you can find a flag, the flag will point away from the source of the wind as well. In our scenario here in my backyard, we see the cloud, which represents the wind, is blowing towards the bow of the boat. Locating this wind direction, we will then position our boat pointing into the wind so as to have a safer time rigging the vessel in preparation for our sail today. Well, I think we found it. Yep, there it is. Here are the parts of our vessel from left to right, the dagger board, the mast, the spars with the sail, the rudder, and down below the wind indicator and the main sheet. Here is a demonstration of the rigging of the Sunfish, a 14 foot, 130 pound vessel that is regarded as the most popular in the world. I just threaded the halyard through the top of the mast, which will help um, to pull the sail up into the air. Now we're steeping the mast through the gooseneck. There's a little cleat here which allows me to let go of the line and it will still hold it in place. Then I will put it through the fear lead and around the gooseneck and cleat it off here to assure that if we do flip upside down, also known as turtling, capsizing, uh, we will not lose the sail and the mast to the bottom of the sea. And I'll just tidy it up a little bit. Now we're going to insert the main sheet, which is, it's a rope, but in sailing they're known as lines. And we attach it to the bridle on the back, the stern, with a bowline knot. And then we will take the, uh, the end and slide it through a block, which is a, a pulley wheel, uh, which will allow you to move the line quickly in and out. Put a stopper knot on the end of that so it doesn't come through. Now we're taking the rudder back. The rudder has the tiller handle, which you steer with, and this uh, connects to the stern. And when down, you can steer your boat. Next, we'll have the dagger board, which goes in this slot. But right now, since we're not in any water, it's not going to go in all the way. That dagger board helps you uh, prevent from sliding sideways when the wind hits you from the side. This uh, wind indicator that I'm attaching will point into the source of the wind. So let's see if we can get it to point towards the cloud. Yeah! So it looks like that's working. This is another type of wind indicator. Audio tape on a wire coat hanger. And that's useful in very light conditions. And you can barely feel the wind on your face. Uh, these wind indicators on the sail are helpful too. So when we're pointed at the wind, the sails should be going straight back and in irons. As you can see, the rope below and the, in the grass is pointing 45 degrees to either side of the source of the wind. So when you're going upwind, you point the boat 45 degrees to the right or to the left, but never at or within that 90 degree range. As I turn away from the wind, I let the boom out as it was above the boat. Now it is halfway out. As I turn further away from the wind, I let the boom out all the way. So it is now at 90 degrees to the boat. When sailing upwind, 
one tacks to the right side of the wind, bringing the boom over the boat, and then crosses through the wind to allow the wind to come over the other side of the boat and brings in the boom again. Continuing upwind, you cross through the wind once more, bring in the boom, and here is a demonstration of why sailing into the eye of the wind doesn't work because it, the sail just flops around. It doesn't hold. And uh, here is our launch. Launching into Lake Carnegie. It's a little chilly. We wheel the dolly right in there, push the boat off, throw the anchor in, which is attached to the bow, and see if it floats. Yep, looks like it's still floating. That's good. All right, we'll put the dolly over here and make sure everything is in order. The dagger board is up because we're still in very shallow waters. We need at least three feet to push it down. So our rudder is down. Got our tiller in hand, which is going to help us steer. And then we pull on that main sheet through the block. Let's see. And now the sail is filling with wind. And we're almost deep enough to push down the dagger board. Downwind sailing is sailing away from the source of the wind. So the boom must be out 90 degrees to catch it and be most efficient. As I start to turn the boat, I pull in the main sheet, bringing the boom closer to me, but not all the way, just halfway. That's known as a reach, and that is the most stable sailing point. Soon I will be pulling the main sheet some more to bring the boom closer to the boat so that I can sail upwind. And here we are sailing upwind, the opposite direction of down. That was a tack as I crossed the bow from one side of the wind to the other side of the wind. Notice the boom is still very close to the boat. And I'm starting to use my body weight to counter the force of the wind the wind wants to knock the boat over. Crossing the bow through the wind again. See how I push the tiller there. Tiller directs the rudder at the back of the boat. And each time you push it away from yourself, you can cross through the wind. Watch the tiller again. As I tack through the wind, I push it away, duck under, and then straighten it out. Continuing upwind sailing. Here I let out the boom a little bit to 45 degrees for the reach as I come back towards the camera. You can see the arrow wind indicator on the front of the boat and where it's pointing. And that's where the wind is coming from. So we'll continue back upwind here, tacking through the wind source straightening the tiller out after having turned, pulling in the main sheet. And if you watch the color of the water and the ripples, you'll see there's some darker spots and some glassier spots. The darker spots indicate stronger wind, which is what we're feeling right here. So I use my body weight, my proprioception skills to counter and balance the boat so that we can sail more efficiently and so that we don't capsize. Here we see the wind is right in front of us, so our sail is luffing. It's an irons. It's just flopping around. We're not moving. But as we pull the main sheet in and turn the rudder to steer us to a point which is 45 degrees from the source of the wind, we start to move. Look at that. Here we go. Returning to shore, I lifted the dagger board so we wouldn't ground. I pulled up the rudder, and now I'm finding my anchor line floating in the water to tie the boat so I can get the dolly. And a little faster. Here's the anchor.
And here's my llama dolly. There are some stickers on it of llamas because I thought that was funny. If I step on the center of the dolly, I can pull the boat up with one hand. Yay!